Okay, it's now 6 p.m. Monday, September 18th. Uh, call a meeting to order at the County Board of Selectmen. Uh, first thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes of, from Wednesday, September 6, 2017. And make a motion we approve it. I uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, minutes look good. Next item, uh, warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $388,399. We have a payroll warrant for $25,611, and we have a payroll deduction warrant of $100,394. i make a motion we approve the warrants. Uh, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's approved. Okay, meetings attended by the Board of Selectmen. You must have been somewhere. So I was. So, <laughs> um... <laughs> So, so I, and some of them, some of them, I wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. But uh, so one of the meetings that I went to that, or I, I don't think you were there. But anyway, there was there was the, the, the Conway Hills Sanctuary Walk. Well, you, I heard you guys got wet, <laughs> and we got wet. That's right. But a piece of property you know well. Yes. And uh, and it was great. A guy from the Mass Audubon led us on a hike up through. Uh, north, uh, past Route 116, mm -hmm. and talked about trees and the plants that are there, and and then the rain started. That was Friday afternoon. I want to say Thursday, Thursday but I take the Thursday. Uh, oh, okay. Southerly route up around by our property. Uh, we got no, we got we got past Doug's house. We got you know north mm -hmm. of there, and the rain started, oh, and boy. and we all stood under trees to see if it would stop. Mm -hmm. And it, it was not stopping, and everyone was getting drenched. And we said, "Let's do this again some other time." But it was, but it, but now I know where it is. I mean, I had no, I had never really well, noticed been quite the a entrance into it before, right there on Route One Sixteen. Mm -hmm. And also, I had never really understood the restrictions that they're applying to it that you know may not be well received, like by the Boydens, like they have to wait until practically August first mm -hmm. to cut their first cutting of hay, and. Uh, that must make hanging it tough. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it was it was interesting, and uh, and there was and I bet there was twenty five people doing the walk. So it was it was surprisingly well attended. Okay. Um, and then and then uh, that's later that same night we had the uh, marijuana meeting at Furcog, and John was there and and and, and uh, Tom was there, and uh, and. And, and it Mary was McClintock good. and Joe Strugowski. That's, that's right, and, and, and other people from kind of, we had our own little table. And, uh, and it was, you know, looking at what, what little they actually now still know about what right. the law is going to become. Still, yeah. A lot of things that aren't really nailed down. Um, but, and, it, and it wasn't as, I've been to other marijuana meetings that were basically how to prevent marijuana from being, you know, dispensed mm -hmm. in your town. And and I didn't get that sense in this meeting. You know, it was, you, you know, you how to live with it, how to get ready for it, how to live with it, um, and you know, and then maybe there are some ways that you could absolutely block it if that's what your town wants to do. But it's really not the intent of the law. So um, anyway, it was a good meeting. Okay. And then one more. What was it? Uh, oh, so I don't know if this is really a town meeting, if this is appropriate, but uh, last. It might have been last Friday. The recorder had its 225th birthday celebration. And so we see Andy, he's not here tonight. We see Andy Castillo a lot. We see George here in town. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed, like, it seemed like a good event to go to. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the former editor before George was a fellow named Tim Blagg. And he was the editor for 25 or 30 years, I think, mm -hmm. a long time. But he gave an excellent talk on the history of Greenfield, starting in 1792, wow. when the recorder began. Which he started by saying, to put this in perspective, George Washington was having his first term as president then. So that sort of gives you gives a sense idea, right? of, of how old the recorder is. And, uh, and, and my only complaint was that no one recorded it. And I thought it was, you know, Tim clearly put a lot of time into it. And it really should. It's a shame that that FCAT was not there, recording it. And it I should believe, have been GCTV. I know it should have been GCTV, but they weren't there. But but if somebody had called Chris Collins, Chris would have been there in a heartbeat. 
uh, and uh, anyway, so but it was an excellent talk. So, so, so those are the meetings that I went to. Good, great. All right. Uh, next thing is, is there any citizens' concerns? I don't see anybody here. This, anybody else go ahead? No. Okay. All business. Uh, Long-term financial plan from the town administrator. Still don't have a hard copy of it. Um, uh, I believe it's being sent off to the state. We should be getting some hard copies from the COG, uh, just not yet. So uh, table that till next time, I guess. Special town meeting, October 30th. Yes, uh, there is one major change. Did you all get copies of the warrant? Yeah. Um, I made a mistake in the uh, in the warrant for the last annual town meeting. Uh, I had it in my budget, and I apparently just didn't transfer it to the warrant. Um, I didn't include the debt service for the fire truck, uh, which is about thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So that's got to come from free cash. There's no other place for that to come from. That'll that'll uh, that'll be good news to the fiscal conservatives in town because it means we didn't put it onto the tax rate this year and we won't be able to spend as much next year without raising an appropriate. That's right. So, uh, uh, nonetheless... Uh, what happens to that if we don't get this check, uh, free cash certified? This gets postponed? We'll have to postpone the yeah. special town meeting, yeah. Um, Wait a minute. Say it again? We'll postpone the special town this meeting. This article only. I don't know that there's anything else that's that's as that's particularly time bound. I mean, there there are other free cash items on here. Yeah. Um, but the major reason for having it is the moratorium and for the marijuana, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that that'll that'll wait two weeks or whatever. It, um, by all good estimates, we should have free cash certified by that. Um, we had something else you, that depended upon free cash. Uh, a, a, a couple, a couple yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and DOR has asked towns whether, you know, to let them know if they have any special town meetings okay. coming up so they can prioritize their review of, uh, mm -hmm. of the finances. So they're, they're very aware of that, and we believe that we're going to be able to, to get this done in time. Uh, but again, if we don't, we okay. postpone it for two weeks or a month or something like that. Um, that's, that's the big one. Uh, and I've, I've reordered the articles here um, mm -hmm. and put the main points in bold, as, yeah. I, uh, as, as is usual. So now it goes from uh, highest cost to lowest cost, as usual, with uh, non-money articles at the end and then the citizen petition after that. Let's just uh, tree work at the grammar school. That is a new one. Um, Bruce Jonat has been after us to do something about a tree that's near the playground. Walter Goodrich went down and looked at it and came up with a variety of recommendations and a cost estimate. And uh, uh, the principal kicked it to the district and the district says it's okay with them. They would prefer it be done through free cash rather than through their operating expenses at this point. Either way, it's gonna come out of the town budget. So my view was to do it quickly and directly. We just take it from free cash now. What has to be done to the tree? Do we know, Ron? Uh, there's a oh. there's two of them that are dead that need to be removed. Are well, those on just over the line on our side of the, of the ground school? It's on the ground school property or the property uh, we own an adjacent to it? Um, uh, this is a stone wall. The yeah. It's in the trail that they built. Right on the edge of the trail there. So it, it yeah, it is on town land. And there there's other there are other downed trees there that um, he thought might be cleaned up. So this is an estimate uh, from him to do their work? Yeah. Uh, and it's fine with the grammar school, it's fine with the district. Um, mm -hmm. and everybody agrees that free cash is the simplest and cleanest way to do it. I mean it'll have to come from free cash anyway. The question mm -hmm. is Okay. Whether it goes directly to the project or through the grammar school, and we go, well, let's just let's just have the town do it because it's, as Ron pointed out, it's town land mm -hmm. anyway. Um, on Article Five, there are now four bills from a prior fiscal year. 
Uh, I'm not. I'm still not sure we're going to have to pay the uh, the 451 for the water. Uh, all the initial representations they gave to me said that it was for a pallet that was delivered in mid March, and we know that pallet was refused. You said back right. Um, and then recently they came back and said, "Oh no, this bill was for the February delivery." And I said to them, all right, if you give me an invoice that says it's for the February delivery, I'll pay it. Um, so in case they come back with that. Um, and cover it. That would cover it. Uh, mm -hmm. So then there's uh, a small one for uh, office supplies, envelopes. Um, a couple for the police department, one for fuel. It was a credit card bill that didn't get in until late. Mm -hmm. And one for clothing. Um, it was a um, high visibility jacket. Um, so that total is now eight hundred twenty-seven dollars and forty-five cents. Uh, revolving fund is the same. Finance committee is the same. I've contacted them, and um, they, they're going to be having a meeting to to go over a number of recommendations. These uh, police items don't come out of his budget. Well, it's from a prior year, so it has to be, um, it it has to be paid by town meeting, okay. and it's it's not in his current year budget. And it's not that much money, so um, it it won't be as hard to hit on free cash as the mistake I made, unfortunately. Um, so I'm uh, we're going to get finance committee recommendations on these things. And for the same for the Conservation Commission, I've asked them if they could come up with a recommendation. It probably won't be in here in time for the mailing, but it might be, actually. If we wait to mail until their meeting the uh, October 10th, which gives it plenty of time to get out, um, we'll be able to put a, put a vote into this um, document. But that would mean, um, no, I don't think we would, because you have to sign the document on the second, because uh, your next meeting isn't until uh, we really want to have it out. Uh, October second, and this then the sixteenth. Next, next meeting. Yeah, um, it wouldn't be till the sixteenth that you um, voted on it. Of October. Of October, and that's that's getting a little bit late to get it out. That's just that is exactly two weeks before the special town meeting. We'd still have to get it copied and mailed. Wouldn't get well, out. We could vote on the third, could we? Yeah. Yes. That that's the plan, uh, or the no, second. Second, I mean, excuse second. me. Second. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the the plan now. So anyway, they'll they'll have a, a recommendation by the mm -hmm. special town meeting, and then the uh, the resolution uh, the signatures were submitted today. Right, they were. So those are the uh, those are the items now for the special town meeting and. Um, believing that's all we're going to get, I would uh, I would recommend closing the warrant at this point. You can always reopen it next time if something comes up, but this will just allow us. I will allow me to send it off to council and all that sort of thing. All right, I'll make a motion that we uh, close the special town meeting warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, uh, new business. Approve a charity event, uh, events, which is that, is that the 5K road race? Yes, there was going to be another one, but it was withdrawn, as we will see when we get to the mail. Okay. So do we, the whole race has been... The five K has been withdrawn, or the no, other? no, no. This this one is this one is good. Uh, it's, okay. It should just be event. There were going to be a couple of them. Yeah, had to about take the one. Five K race. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, we have to I, that? I don't. I don't think you formally approved to. that. We talked about it two weeks ago. That's, yes, that's the one on October first, uh, right? I believe so. Mm -hmm. we'll make a motion we approve the five uh, K race for the October first. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next one. Sign a letter to residents about the winter parking. We have that letter somewhere? No. Yeah, it's in the... Uh, it, it should yep. be in the yellow folder. Yeah, listen here. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the yellow folder will be the uh, the official version. Here's the copy. I don't think it's on. Yeah. He's got copies. Is this it? Copies. He has the original. My printed mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not. Oh, I got two of them. I oh. printed one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Talking about this one, right? Yep. Yeah, that's that's the one with the. Uh, All right. Yeah, it's kind of a funny little. Um, let's see what's this sign? Oh, is that just? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's um. Yeah. The same as this one, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Oops. 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 So you want to tell us what the, well, well, basically, you want to tell, uh, tell the residents? <laughs> what, what, basically what I'm what, looking to do is make residents aware of our parking ban and also our on off street parking regulation that we have in our protective bylaws. That pretty much anything within 10 feet of the road is considered on street parking. That was news to me. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, it is to a lot of people. And that's yeah. why I'm trying to do this. Yeah, I, is because with the parking ban, that means that if you're parking within 10 feet of the road, you're in violation of the parking ban. And this is so you have a space for the snow to accumulate on the side of the road as winter goes by. Yes, and as the way things have been going the last few years, we've been having residents park their car at the end of their driveway right at the edge of the road which becomes an issue with following the road. Yeah, sometimes you got to go out around it. Right. Because it's so close. Yeah, and that means the road doesn't get fully cleared. Because you put snow on the road, then they're going to come on to pay for the paint job. So. <laughs> um, so we're just trying to make the residents aware of what we have for um, parking ban and our bylaw as far as off-street parking. And I've had talked to Jim Hawkins, the building inspector, and He's the one that is legally will enforce the off-street parking. So he was all for this letter to let the people know that there was some, um, what the regulations are. And if he has to, then he'll have to do his job with enforcing uh, off-street parking. So we're just trying to get it out there before winter so people can make plans, because I know there's a few places in town where the people actually park on the side of the road as their normal parking. There doesn't appear to be any parking on anywhere else for them to park. So we're trying to make it so that they can plan. <laughs> this is always, this is the whole thing that's been enforced now, right? You're just reinforcing it. Right. This is already in, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, this oh, yeah. is nothing new. Right. Well, the parking ban was in 14. But. It's just raising its profile. Mm -hmm. So, can we get this into the visitor or something? I was actually going to make a town-wide mailing. Oh, okay, but but a lot of people read the visitor. Yep, I can uh, do that. And, too. and the visitor's date is the twentieth. So, so here it is, the eighteenth. Right. Okay. So, so. Yeah. should get out next. And month. and you know, it doesn't have to be this whole thing. Just right. Uh, the more touches people get, the better. A lot of people read the visitor is great. You yeah. know. And, uh, Any more discussion, Bob? Yeah, tell me where I can put a couple of my cars. Mm. But no, thank mm. you. I, you know, this is I'll make a motion then that we approve the uh, Winter Roads parking letter. You have a second? Uh, okay, I'll second it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a truck that doesn't start this parked on the mm. road. Right. So you need the best way to do it. Okay. John said he would be in tomorrow morning to sign things that uh, yeah, need to see. you want to take this or do you want to? No, I'm yeah, going to sign it. Let's leave yeah. it here. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Thanks. Thank okay. you very much. Ooh. Food for thought here, I'll tell you. <laughs> you have plenty of land to park. Tell you. Okay, next item is approved public much. service announcements for inclusion in the November tax bill. So, speaking of multiple communications, we also have a brief mention of that. 
Uh, this is the first time I think we've done this, at least in a while. <clears throat> it is possible to send out town notices mm -hmm. in with the tax bills if the select board approves it. Is that what this is this here? So that's yes. what that is. And okay. that's, it's uh, meant to be uh, cut into three parts uh, for easy insertion into the tax bills. So we'll print that out on oh, some okay. kind of color. Oh, I papers. see. So it's, it's really just a third of it. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, we got two different winter road items here. So it's all going to be incorporated up into one or what? You got a winter roads, then you got a border committee of vacancies, then you go back to winter roads again. Yeah, there's three. Well, there's three perfect, sections. It's so there's three times on there's the this paper. third, there's this third. Yeah, the, it, the, the whole thing is three. It goes from winter roads down to contact. The, this, this is just a single page with three inserts in, on it. So it'll be cut into three parts. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay, so yeah, this okay. is what's going to get sent out. Okay. Just, okay. Yeah, okay. just that much of it. So it's great that this is going to go out, but I still like the visitor. <laughs> I hope that, I mean, Ron said he put it Well, yeah, I mean, so get it three times. That's good. Yeah. Any other discussion about that? No, I think it's a great and idea. And I'll make a motion that we approve this uh, that goes into the tax bills, this letter. I second. I a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Okay. What do we got here? Approved cost sharing commitment for updating of the town's multi hazard mitigation plan. And this is uh, part of what's going to be a long process. Uh, every, uh, I think it's five years, we update our multi hazard mitigation plan. It used to be called the natural hazard mitigation plan. Uh, and what that does is that allows us uh, various pockets of FEMA money if, if anything happens um, that we would not get if we did not have this kind of plan. So this is, uh, I've been working on this with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. They were tremendously helpful um, last time in coming in and having meetings and uh, getting people to uh, comment on the last multi-hazard mitigation plan. So this is this one, and you'll note that um, in the uh, special town meeting warrant, the uh, article three uh, is saying if the town will transfer from free cash or otherwise provide, and number two is $1,875 for matching funds for a grant to update the town's multi-hazard mitigation plan. So that's the money um, often, that we would be... How often do we have to update this? Once every five years. So are we do we have one in the force right now, right? Yes. Which hasn't helped us much to get our previous grant we didn't get. Well, oh no. Um, and we, that's... Uh, had this hazardous mitigation grant, wasn't it? That, 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 yeah, we're, we're uh, applying Oh, it's, it's definitely part of the application uh, that we have a plan. We wouldn't be able to apply for that if we didn't have the plan. That's the, uh, that's the sort of uh, benefit that it has. So, but we didn't get it, no. But we could apply for it, and we are applying again. So do, do we have to see the plan, or? Oh, there will be multiple public. Um, so the council of governments are putting this plan together for us. And this is our portion of the cost? Yeah. And th this is based on a roughly $8,000 um, cost to the program. We could have gone for a more expensive one uh, for $10,000, but uh, neither uh, Kimberly McPhee at the COG nor I thought that um, we needed that, that additional work because we, we've already had some of it done with some of the work the COG did on the South River here earlier. Um, they so we're only paying 1875 Yes. The COG pays the rest? Yes. Well, well no. The, um, that's what the, the grant will pay the rest. This is our match uh, okay. for the grant. So we're paying about a quarter of it. 
Yeah, yeah. it's a 75 25 grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're paying a quarter Great. of the grant, yeah. Great. We can't sign this letter now until Tom being approval, correct? Um, well, you can approve it and then John can come in and sign it. Is that just John's signature there? No, it's all three of us. It's all three? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All you have to do is approve it and. and and so well, I'll make a motion that we approve this letter pending town meeting approval of the $1,875. Because that has to be approved first, right? Um, I don't I mean, know. It's an article. Well, let, let's put it this way. We can't um, approve nothing for fun, spending money if we don't have the money in the account to spend for it. Well, that's true. So um, we can make a uh, tentative approval pending the town meeting outcome. And I'm not sure of the timing on that. Um, you can always get reserve fund money for it if we had to, if it didn't pass town meeting. I don't think, uh, even though town meeting might pass up getting an eight thousand dollar benefit for under. Well, when do you have to have this to them by? Um, it's my impression that we have to have the commitment letter in before the special town meeting. So there's two avenues for us to get the funding at least. Um, so I think it depends on how confident. What was the reserve fund you said? Yeah. That would be the other major source. Uh, I'm wondering if there's anything in emergency management. So we would amend this on town meeting floor to for where the money comes from if we need to. No, what we're there. If it doesn't pass town meeting floor, I think it does. Then we ask for oh, it. Okay. Then we'll just reserve have it take it out of the reserve from through the okay. finance yeah. committee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, then I'll make a motion to approve the letter pending town meeting approval for the $1,875, or if that fails, uh, the uh, reserve fund transfers involving through the uh, country, through our finance committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Sure. So you want us tentatively to sign this now? I guess we probably could, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, give them, give them the we have an there. official copy that they want signed, or just any one of these? Um, they're all the same. The they're all yeah, the they're all. The same. Oh, uh, the one in there, I think, is probably two two pages. It's not double sided. It's more formal. And John will have to. Sign. You'll let John know what our vote was. Yeah. Oh, it's placed. Okay, the next item. Uh, uh, employee five year recognition, recognition letters from for Christine Lankard and Lynn Kane. Great, unbelievable. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, this recommendation, a congratulations letter to uh, Tina Lankard for being on the fire department for five years. I have a second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And also approve the uh, letter to uh, Lynn Kane for being our outstanding secretary in the middle office over here. I'll make a motion to approve that. Assistant Treasurer Collector. Assistant Treasurer Collector. Mm -hmm. Official panel. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You want to sign above this or below it? It's above it, right? Yeah. Okay. 
that's it. Yeah. Next item on the agenda is items not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. It says the CDBG annual report summary of activities as of December 31st, 2016. Yes. And that is, um, is that in the items to be? Is that uh, this here? That yeah, should be, yeah. I don't think we got a copy That is that. what that is. Yeah. So you may know that the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority administers a revolving fund for housing rehabilitation for us. And they manage all the funds, they manage the whole program. Uh, what, what we do is say they can do it, and uh, then they uh, have a list of people and they let it be known to people in Conway that this rehabilitation money is available for a low to moderate income. And this uh, was the list, they said they had a waiting list. Residents, there's a waiting list. And so they provide us uh, with uh, financial summaries of how we're doing. And we have to say, yeah, that's exactly what you're telling us it is. Uh, <laughs> we didn't use any money in 2015? Um, According to this, it says no. Yes. I balance you know, started and the same balance finished. And uh, I asked them about that, and they gave a perfectly uh, reasonable answer, which I'm having a hard time coming up with now. But it may be that they, they, um, that the dates for that, they actually did not Start the program spend yet, things. Maybe? But they have six, I think they have at least six people on a waiting list. So um, uh, it's, the, uh, it's the numbers that they're asking the town to certify. And the accountant and the treasurer said, yeah, it seems reasonable to us. So uh, Jan signed that. So what it takes now is the, the uh, signature of the chair of the select board um, but I think it's always best to have the select board as a whole approve um, uh, signatures uh, when it involves, you know, financial dealings like this. So uh, that's why I put it on your on your agenda. Well, it's about forty thousand dollars, a little under forty thousand. Thirty-two, it says here. Yeah. Oh, a little, a little over yeah. thirty. Then. Okay. Uh, this is the first time that the federal government is asking all of the towns to send something into them. We have never done this part of it before. So it's a bit new to me as well. Why do we deficit why do we deficit spend on one of these projects? One of the projects was approved for $36,461.59, and they actually spent $42,169. They went in the red by $9,707. I'm sure that was like any home improvement project where they found something that they, uh, they needed to spend more money on. And, and the, other, the other project was for $37,000, and that was approved and spent. Yeah, the... Um, any particular project can go in the red so long as the balance, you know, is maintained. And we do have a, a reasonable balance, which is what this is all about. So could you ask him again, what, how come these are all zero and, and let yeah. us know? And yeah, I'll report we'll, back on that. Whatever the reason was. This is really confusing to understand. <laughs> you start looking at all these figures, it's like, wow! It's, it's a complicated process, which is why I'm glad that they uh, are administering it. And this is only one of their programs. Mm. What's the HRRLF revolving account? What the heck is that? 
They that's, committed seventy-seven hundred dollars to it. That's a res, that's a revolving loan fund. The housing and redevelopment or the, the HR. Loan fund, the loan fund of nine. Okay. Yeah. So we're actually down to twenty-four thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. Yeah. It's only a, only a couple of. Uh, Tom said you want us to sign, so I'll sign that. Yeah, that as well. Make sure it's in the top. Make sure it puts the thing together. That'll be good. So this is not going on top at all. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Town administrator's update next. Uh, for committees, um, for your information, the 250th committee reports that they have no specific plan for removing the anniversary signs. They have discussed the general time frame of October, November, uh, really whenever they can get help to do it. Uh, and that would be sort of later, later in the season. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I alluded to before, Mike Haley has withdrawn his request for Irish road bowling for the season, but says he expects to return in the spring. A little addition to that, he, uh, he was um, proposing this as a charity event for something separate from the Festival of the Hill Scholarship. Now, he's proposing a different scholarship fund for engineering. Mm. And uh, I assume we'll get back to us on details for that. Uh, for department news, a uh, website update, um, just to clarify some confusion that uh, we've already had. Uh, while boards, committees, and commissions will be able to take on management of their page, they would receive their own password just for that page. Uh, this office will be happy to continue any up uh, to update any page as necessary. That's good. Uh, I like that. Some people were, were afraid we were going to make people do their mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. updates. And of good. course, our object is not to make life harder for the committees, but easier. Uh, I'm working with the assessor and the highway superintendent on road acceptances. Uh, the 1989 list is only a list of standardized street and road names int intended to appear on the first official town map for valuation and other purposes. I had been under the impression that the list limited the number of townways by providing a positive list, with any roads not on that list becoming no longer town roads. But it does not, and we need to have a complete and limited list in order to avoid people claiming paper roads as real roads the town would then be obliged to maintain. I'm working on a possible solution that would discontinue all roads not on a list without having to have boundaries for roads on the list. So that would be for uh, the annual town meeting. So, and so in this 1889 list, there are roads that are not official town roads. No. All of the names on that list are the names that we use for valuation and other official purposes. So I would hope that that list, and there's one that was uh, added by hand, I guess, at the registry or something. Uh, um, so that the list is um, presumably the list that we would say any road not on this list is discontinued. That would allow us to work with the, the roads on that list to get their boundaries straightened out. Somebody very nicely did that at the registry of deeds, huh? Uh, I think it was uh, done by uh, some, a member of the Board of Selectmen, but I'm not sure. Somebody wrote something in at the, at the last minute that needed, that had been left off inadvertently. So is, is there a list of town roads somewhere that does contain roads that are discontinued? I mean, it sounds like what you're saying is 
you're afraid people will now come forward and say, here's my road name on this list. And no, no. It must be a town road. Any road name on that list is a town road, and we want to keep it. And that's that's how we that's how our chapter ninety money is based on yeah. that list too. Yes. So those roads are fine. But is there a and different list somewhere that has? There is not other a different roads? list. Okay. But he just wants to clarify, I guess, yeah. right? With everybody that. Yeah. This is our list, and only yeah. our list. And nothing else is acceptable. Nothing that's not on this list is a town road, which is a kind of a, a negative way of putting it. Right. Because um, in the past we've had, uh, years past, we had some people that wanted a portion of the town or the town road accepted again, and they went back through all the records way back in the 1800s, and uh, one came up with a, with a, uh, a legitimate, right, that, you know, hey, it was never discontinued. Never discontinued, yeah. That's what he's trying to prevent. Yeah. No, w I... w without having to accept certain roads as town roads, which means we'd have to know their exact boundaries, mm -hmm. which we don't know for all of those roads that, that, are, that are town roads now. So, complex issue. Mm. Hope to have something in the spring. Okay. You'll bring that list to us before we before town meeting? So we review it with you or something? Yeah, it'll be the same list as the 1989. Um, uh, tax bills, this is big news. Tax bills will be delayed this year, probably by, I'll say, close to two weeks. Uh, we will put a notice in the visitor and on the town website. We have put that notice up on the town website. Mm -hmm to help cut down on calls to the office. Um, I am working on an article for the annual town meeting for approval of a special fund for mid-year grant matches, probably a $10,000. Uh, again, this would be something so we didn't have to worry about whether or not we had the money for a match, but if a grant came up, we could put that much into it and, and we'd be fine. Uh, this year, we're fortunate to have a a, a well-timed special town wow. meeting um, so that it could allow for grant applications, but that may not be the case in future years. Uh, I've been looking at co community compact opportunities, and one best practice seems attractive, costing out our collective bargaining agreement for our school unions. Uh, Conway Grammar School teachers uh, and instructional assistants and Frontier Regional High School. Uh, this is under their human resources category of best practices. Uh, I'd also be interested in calculating what agreement numbers, what agreement numbers would result in a 2.5% increase in overall school costs with some assumptions about health care. Yeah. Although that's not listed as a best practice, the administration is open to such related proposals under this program. That said, it's not at all clear what would be involved in such analyses or what they would cost. My thinking is they should not be very expensive and that a methodology packet with a spreadsheet might be useful for other towns. I've been in touch with uh, Joe Markarian again to see if he has any ideas about who might do that kind of analysis, how much it would cost, and therefore how much we should ask for if we apply for a community compact grant. So th what they talked about was costing out a, uh, a collective bargaining agreement. And what I'm saying is, well, that's all well and good to know how much that costs, but what we really want to know is what an agreement would look like that would lead to a 2.5% increase in total school costs. And the school administration supports this? Uh, they haven't, this is the first time I've mentioned it Why to Why can't anyone. the school give us that information? Well, I'll hire somebody from the outside. Uh, Why can't they give it to us out of their budget? They well, know what it is. No, uh, that's what I'm saying is, I, it, I think it's a very complex calculation and it might be best to have a third party do it. Um, I, I don't know that they, this, this goes outside of what they usually do. Right For, now the business manager does it, right? 
Um, well, they give us a budget. They, yeah, they give us a budget. They don't give us a projection, and they certainly don't work it backwards. Um, so that's the kind of thing that would be helpful going into the next oh, set of negotiations. Don't know what you're really voting for, really. So, so you do, you do Joe Markarian knows how to do this, or he knows. No, um, but he said he would ask around uh -huh. and uh -huh. see uh, and see who might be able to to do that. And the state would help pay for this as yeah. part of this program. The community compact is a hundred percent grant. It yeah. doesn't require yeah. a local match. Right. So, if we could figure out somebody who could do something for a reasonable amount of money, uh, my bet is that the state. I mean, this would, uh, this is what that. we had very tough meetings about, right? Last right. spring, right. And, right? Yeah. You know, to avoid that or to, to exactly would be wonderful. Exactly. Uh, and finally. Um, I, uh, I was a bit premature. I said the final sign-off for the South River project happened Friday with a sign-off by the Army Corps of Engineers. Actually, they're not going to sign off till the end of October, but they've done the observation and will write up their report, which will be the final sign-off from them. Um, and then we'll also have to get a certificate of completion or compliance from the Conservation Commission, and then the project will be done. So, has, so these, has these take the cutting a long occurred? Time. And the, and oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the the second the second round yeah. happened. Yeah. So it's it's up to us now to control the invasive. So uh, I anticipate the Open Space Committee to take a more active role now. And that's my report. Sure. Any concerns with Slacker? No. Okay, mail, we have mail. Oh, we have mail. We have mail. Just the mail? Is that the mail? Yeah, yeah, no, in the... What's this here? Oh, and there's an announcement. That comes after the uh, mail. Okay, let's go out the mail. Okay. Well, we got the mailbox here. This is a letter from Mike Haley. Oh. And that, that's where he explains that he... Uh, is not going to do it, but I. What does he say that he'll come back in the spring? Yeah, he said the there'll be no flinging our balls about on October first. He, ah. didn't, he didn't have time to get it coordinated. Without. <laughs> That's Mike. There are some other issues there. That he's going to work on. This is the Audubon lot that you had. Oh yeah. Oh, that was oh, great. That's gone by. Yeah. That's the past. Okay. This has gone by. It's going to the governors. And just all stuff about it. Some of it may be old. Open yeah. Space Committee, Invasive Species Project, September 11th, probably the 12th. That's gone by. Yeah, we should clear that out. Franklin County uh, quarterly meeting, September 28th. Yeah, all the old items should go into the back. Uh, Fish, uh, town of ministries, marijuana, uh, that's the one at, uh, this is the uh, Frank Dodd Stuckman's Association meeting in South Deerfield at the Butterfly Conservatory. Do we know that is, rumors on the street said it was closed. Oh. Can you check for us just to make sure this is still a go at this location? Maybe it's just a butterfly part they closed. I don't know. I don't know. Because one of the owners had passed away recently, real recently. And uh, did you have that? I have it. I mean, I, I uh, scheduled yeah. it. Yeah. I have it. Also, it's the same date as the regional planning board meeting. Ah, yes. So, so that's, that's kind of unfortunate. Thursdays are popular. Yeah. Someone's invite to the parade. Ah, yes, next spring. Town of Summerlin uh, and the 300 Celebration Parade Committee would be honored to have your participation in a parade celebration to be held on Saturday, June 16, 2018. The one and a quarter mile, 1.4 mile parade will begin approximately at 1 p.m. at the elementary school on Old Amherst Road and marching west to Main Street. 
disbanding at the intersection of North Silver Lane. All marching units should be present in the staging area one hour beforehand. Uh, and they would like an answer back by October 30th, whether we're going to participate or not. I'll put that on again next time. You want to put that on? I'll leave that in the file, for the mail file. How's that? Yeah, thank you. Because John probably won't hear what that took. Uh, 20th anniversary, that's already gone by. No, it isn't. 20th, Council Government's anniversary, Friday, October 13th, 3 to 5 p.m. Do you know about that, though? What is this? This is the, that's good to know. And this is a letter from Jim Hawkins and our residents in town that uh, the third warning on boarding it up. So which, which house is this? Uh, uh, one, Children uh, Falls Road. Is the, that, so that's uh, near the center of town. The, uh, uh, is it Harris Farm? Okay. Oh, the Harris Farm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yo, Harris Farm. Yeah. yeah. I'll put this in John so John can see it too. Maybe he wants to see that. If you have not already seen it. Do you look at this one? I don't think so. Okay. Okay, it's all the mail. And we'll go to the announcements next. For immediate release. Massachusetts Bar Association offers free legal advice to Western Mass residents. Is that posted on our website? Are we going to put it on our website for residents to look at? We can do that. Uh, it uh, gives a phone number to dial and stuff like that, so I think that'd be good for the residents if they have any legal advice. Yeah. You need a vote on that, Tom, or no? No. Okay. No. I'll just read that to you and Lisa. Master's Collector, Collectors and Treasures Association. I am pleased to, to Jan Warner. I am pleased to advise you that you have successfully passed our examination and met the other requirements for certification. That the Board of Certification has approved your designation as Certified Massachusetts Municipal Treasurer. Your certificate will be ready for presentation for you at lunch on November 15th. Uh, I hope you'll be able to make your make it to this meeting on that day. And congratulations, best wishes. I'll make a motion that we drop a note to Jan congratulating her on her uh, getting oh. certified. Yeah. That's huge. You, you, I make That's, that a motion? Sure. Second. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tom, you can write up something nice about that, can't you? I will do that. Probably a good, good gesture to do. Okay. Any other business to come forward before the board? Bob, you got anything else? No, I'm okay. good. Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, October 2nd. 2017 here at the office at 6 p.m. Hearing no other further business, I make a motion that we adjourn this meeting. So move. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.